Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good today. So I want to come on here and talk about all the drama once again surrounding Meg Thee Stallion. So if you guys do not know, her GQ magazine interview definitely has a lot of people feeling some type of way. So what went down is this. The day before I had did a whole breakdown, read to you guys what she had to say in the GQ article about the whole situation that went on with Tory Lanez, how she came out and she claimed that Tory Lanez tried to pay her and Kelsey off. So basically what then happened is that the Breakfast Club decided to talk about it and Charlemagne the God was not feeling the fact that Megan went to a white publication and basically spilled all the tea. But then when she was supposed to come on the Breakfast Club, they had all these rules and stipulations on what the Breakfast Club could ask her and could talk about. So I think at that point, either the Breakfast Club passed or Meg just didn't show up. So Charlemagne definitely felt a way. Let me go ahead and play you guys what they had to say on the Breakfast Club. Go ahead and check this out. That's she told all that to GQ? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, didn't Meg say uh, that Meg was supposed to be here this week, but she... Um... They had a long laundry list of things not to talk to yeah, her about, I and it was I, all Tory Lanez and that situation related. Yeah, I think I think you know what? I, yeah, I think it's crazy because when she does white publications, white publications, she's able to talk and and talk about everything that she wants to talk about. But mm-hmm. when she goes to the black press and black publications, there's a list that the label sends out that you know don't ask her about this, don't talk about this, don't talk about that. But we're the ones that support her and hold her down and play her music and, and talk about all the good things that she does and go through all that stuff. It's, yeah, it's I would love to, do that. I would love weird, to read man. the GQ magazine article because if you're going to name her rapper of the year, you should be focusing on her her rap, right? I would. But there's other, yeah, that, that's in there too. This was just part, no. you know, and, and yeah, definitely. It's a whole interview. She talks about uh, working with Cardi B on WAP and just a lot of other things. Meg. Talks about YouTube, mm-hmm. Apple Music, and all of that. Salute to Meg. Wish her the best on her uh, debut album. Good, good news, but you know, I just don't like when artists go to white publications and spill their guts. But when they come to the black media outlets, they want us. Now we also have a long don't know list sometimes not to talk about. You're right. Not, if it's the artist it's sending her. that list out, I'm or sure, if it's the yeah. label and representation saying that, a lot of times artists don't even know. They're like, "What? What did they tell you? I couldn't talk about." That is very true because um, uh, they asked us not to ask Fifty about Donald Trump too, and he brought this it up. Morning. Right? <laughs> he yeah, brought yeah. It he up. brought it up himself. Exactly. It's, 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 yeah, so I don't want to put that on her. We don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah, that. I don't think it. I'm, I'm, I'm positive it's not her, but I just think it's whack when her representatives for that. do that. Because when she was coming and then, up, and she was a new artist. We were the ones supporting her before any white publication even knew who she was. The black publication, yeah, the black least, media, it, was supporting her. And at least talk, talk with your people, because you know you're, you're, you're comfortable with your people. You know, the white people just using you for a story. All right, so you guys just heard what Charlemagne and DJ Envy had to say. Angela Yee did try to chime in and have her back and say, you know, well, let's be fair. Sometimes the celebrities have no idea that the publicists are making all these stipulations. So now on top of that, Jason Lee ended up coming to my comment section and he basically wrote, you know, he basically co-signed the same thing Charlemagne and them were saying. And Jason Lee has called out Meg Thee Stallion for not wanting to come and speak to black publications. He did say this before the breakfast club so I guess that kind of solidified it for him and many other people but now to be fair the Meg Thee Stallion interview was done two months ago so a lot of things can change in two months maybe at that time she felt like talking about it and right now right before her album release she doesn't really feel like talking about it on the breakfast club and also let's not forget that the breakfast club can be very very messy with their interviews you know um, matter of fact Charlamagne was trending a few months ago I had posted it when people were going through his old Breakfast Club interviews, dragging him because of the way he would ask questions, um, the way he disrespected people like Logic and, you know, so many others. He's like, whatever. Yeah, I talk about it on the album. Who the hell raped your sisters? Oh, man, I don't want to get into that. Yeah, it's a little yeah, too personal. Yeah, yeah. But- that I was worried about. Mm-hmm. Now, is it a condition? Because after 11 o'clock, my eye does the same thing. And I always say it when it, when it happens, I'll be like, I'm looking a little far as Whitakery right now. So is it like a condition or... Um. So that might have been why she didn't want to go on there as well. 
So then later on that day with the Breakfast Club drama, there was also drama with the lawyer, the one that everybody, the one that became famous off of just being at Takashi 69s court case, even though he was not the lawyer for the case. Um, he's speaking on the whole situation. He's basically saying that, you know, these new revelations that Megan is putting out there could really affect the case. And so he's not feeling that. And so this is what he had to say about the situation. Y'all go ahead and check this out. All right. So Meg Thee Stallion claims that Tory Lanez tried to pay her off to keep her quiet. That's crazy. Why? Because the prosecutor who's already prosecuting Tory for allegedly shooting Meg twice in the foot could hear that and be like, all right, I'm going to add felony witness tampering charges. If you're accused of a felony, you can't go around paying people off to keep them from testifying against you. You definitely can't pay off the alleged victim or even try to. Tory's defense, if he's charged, would obviously be what you would expect, right? Like the same woman who's lying about me shooting her twice in the foot is now lying about me trying to pay her to keep her from testifying. So we'll see how that goes. But what's crazy here is let's say the cops didn't know that Meg was making this claim and they're hearing about it for the first time in a GQ interview leading up to her album release and then they hear it and they go all right we're going to add felony witness tampering charges and then Tori is now facing felony witness tampering he has to probably take, do a new bail hearing just nuts nuts be very interesting to see if the cops already heard about this and if they're hearing about this for the first time whether they decide to bring charges all right so you guys just heard what he had to say so shortly after that between the lawyer going viral between the breakfast club drama Tory Lanez decided to get onto Instagram and he basically said walking away from the bullshit of 2020 like and then he proceeded to moonwalk out of 2020 y'all go ahead and check this out <laughs> All right, so you guys just saw that video. So this entire situation is very interesting. Now, if that's not crazy enough, I swear Meg is definitely going through it this year. Um, a celebrity chef decided to basically um, put it out there that they had cooked for Meg the Stallion at Travis Scott's house. So this is what the chef wrote. The chef wrote, hey, y'all, I really cook for Meg the Stallion in Travis Scott's house. It's really sinking in. Then the chef proceeded to post a video of Meg Thee Stallion twerking by a plate of food. <laughs> Y'all go ahead and check this out. All right, so you guys just saw that video. Then the chef went on to write this. When at the stallion hopped on my live, I lost my mind. You can tell by my face, but she loved the food and that's all that matters. Stay tuned for what's next, y'all. Making moves on an Android. Thank you, Edgequil Knight. So that's what the person wrote. And so a lot of people was like, oh, hell no. Meg is over there with, you know, Travis. She's trying to get with Kylie's baby daddy. There's this weird underlying feud that the Internet has basically put together. They claim that Kylie and Megan are beefing. And here's why. OK, after Meg was shot back in July, Kylie decided to kind of be messy and post a picture of just her foot, just her toes, not even the whole foot, the toes. And the ocean. And she wrote, thank you, God, for another beautiful day. So a lot of people were saying, OK, that was shade towards Megan. Why would you show toes? Because at that point, people thought that Megan's toe was shot off and all this other mess. And um, Kylie never addressed it. A lot of people are also saying that there's a lot of underlying tension because Megan has basically bit Kylie's style. So here are two photographs of Megan with a long braid, just like Kylie. And then there's another photograph of Megan in the WAP video next to her TV monitors. And then you see a picture of Kylie um, with her face in the TV monitor. And they're saying that Megan bit that from Kylie. So anyways, in response to all the mess between supposedly Travis Scott and Megan having dinner, Kylie took to her Instagram and she posted this. She says, dinner at mine. So a lot of people are taking that as shade towards Megan and Travis Scott. And then you see Chloe comes on there and she says, coming. And then Chris Jenner says, um, yes, please. So it seems like the whole Kardashian clan kind of knows what's up. 
Now, do I think that Megan is low key trying to take Travis Scott from Kylie, even though last time I checked, Kylie and Travis are not necessarily back together? Um, no, I think the most plausible reason that she's over there eating dinner is that they might be working on some new music. So I think it was kind of messy for the chef to put it out there, even though the chef is trying to build their brand and I get it. But if they're working on new music, that could have spoiled the surprise. But I don't necessarily think that she's over there trying to smash Travis Scott, you know. But I do believe that there is some underlying tension between Kylie and Megan. And that's why I say this this industry, these industry relationships are so fake. Even during the live stream when they went live way back in the summertime, when I saw it, I felt nothing but disingenuousness. You know, you got Kylie like, oh, my God, you're going live meaning that she wasn't really trying to go live, but being that she's live, I'm going to jump up in here. And then it's like Kylie damn near, you know what I'm saying, shoulder bumped her ass out the way, like, move over, bitch, let me get in this scene. You know, so I found that funny. And then Tori comes up with his loud ass, and he's trying to be seen, and then you can tell her attitude. Something about Megan's attitude flipped when Tori got close, and she was like, don't get my phone wet. You can tell she kind of had, like, an attitude towards Tori, maybe because the whole night he was flirting with Kylie who knows? But it was just something about that whole dynamic that night. And that was right before the whole shooting happened. We're going live? We're going live. Oh, going live right now. We had to come, um, we had to come kill the streets for, for five minutes. Uh, Tori, don't get my phone wet. That just didn't sit well with me. It just came off as very fake, very needy, especially being that Megan and Jordan were so close. You know, at one point they were hanging out a lot. And so then to see Megan with Kylie was just kind of weird. Now, as far as people getting mad that Megan supposedly is copying Kylie and biting Kylie's style. um, Excuse me. Is she not a Kardashian Jenner? All they do is bite. You know what I'm saying? Styles, clothing, hairstyles, slogans, saying. They appropriate all that shit from black women, okay? Her whole damn body's been appropriated from a black woman. Kylie didn't look like that five, six years ago. Come on now. You know, so I find that funny that when somebody supposedly bites Kylie, People have turned that into this beef and it's an issue. But how many times have the Kardashians and the Jenners taken from other people, not giving credit, um, taking clothing styles from, you know, other designers that were not as big as them? These women watch Instagram and social media and they thieve off of smaller people all the time. They've been called out and hell, they've even been sued behind it. So let's keep that real. They're not the originators of anything. Kylie Jenner is the youngest and richest of the entire family. She started her makeup line back in 2015, selling $29 lipstick kits and then grew that into a big company called Kylie Cosmetics. She then sold 51% of Kylie Cosmetics to a beauty conglomerate called Cody in a deal worth $1.2 billion just late last year. Forbes now has come to the conclusion after reviewing financial statements from Cody, which is a publicly traded company, that she's been lying. In a lengthy and scathing feature that was published just today, Forbes claims her company, that would be Kylie Cosmetics, is much smaller and less profitable than Jenner led on to. <laughs> Even their whole makeup line, they only got into makeup because they seen YouTubers blowing up and becoming celebrities and creating their own makeup line. Before this, you never heard these women even talk about makeup or really acknowledge makeup. It wasn't until they saw, oh, there's money to be made in this genre because look at Jeffree Star. He was a nobody. Now he's a millionaire. Look at Huda Beauty and all these other people who were just, you know, regular folks who decided to invest their money in makeup. And then the Kardashians ran to do the same thing and now Kylie is supposedly a billionaire because of her lip kit you know so nothing they've done has been really original not even their reality tv show you know people been doing reality television but theirs just ended up being the most successful and they and theirs had the most longevity so I won't take that from them but I just find it comical that people are trying to say that that's why they're beefing because Meg keeps copying Kylie as if Kylie's an originator of anything 
So anyways, y'all, that is the tea today on Meg Thee Stallion. Okay, you have the black news publications feeling some type of way about her. You got Kylie low-key throwing shade again. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Let me know your thoughts on everything. How do you feel about this? How do you feel about what uh, Charlemagne the God had to say? You know, like I said, I've been caught this out, you know, for a while now, how they treat black publications. Um, we've all seen videos where you'll see the black publications and black media at the end of the red carpet. But People Magazine, Getty Images, E! and all those networks, they get dibs. That's where these a lot of these celebrities run to. Um, you know, you'll even have their publicists shooing away black interviewers. But then as soon as it's somebody white or somebody from People, then it's okay for them to speak. So this has been a problem for a while now. Um, um, even when uh, we bring black celebrities on our platforms to interview them, they won't share it unless it's the Breakfast Club or somebody huge like that. They won't share it. They won't post on their social media. So I, I kind of peep game. That's why I don't do interviews anymore. You're not going to use me for my shit and then go on about your fucking merry way. So I think that's BS. And I do think that that needs to change. It's not fair because so many of these same people will go on to Vlad TV Adam 22 and they will shout it from the rooftops oh my god go watch my interview with Vlad go watch my interview on No Jumper but then when it comes to smaller black publications it's crickets but what's funny is that a lot of times these people reach out to us wanting to be interviewed but then they don't want to give us any shine which is like an oxymoron so you know me enough you know what I'm saying because you watch me and you're reaching out and you want me to interview you but then I'm not good enough for you to be like hey I went on to Lovely T's place platform go check it out so like I said once I peeped that game I was good so he is saying a lot of truth but again the breakfast club they've also ambushed people you know some of their questions have been very uncouth so I can see why she kind of probably didn't want to be bothered with them so anyways y'all let's go ahead and get the discussion popping make sure you hit that subscribe button don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to share. And last but not least, make sure you hit the notification bell, honey, so that we can be down with the notification squad. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right. Deuces. Deuces.